Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Now we're going to talk about belts this week, for two reasons. First off, we get a lot of folks sending in questions, just need some basic information, hole spacing, oblong, and whatnot. We will take care of every bit of that, got a great chart for you. Secondly though, heads up, Father's Day's coming up. Yeah, we need to watch each other's backs on these, right? Don't want to let one of these get by us. All right, but we're going to make a simple belt for dad, and we're going to use one of our beautiful, simple belt blanks. Yeah, sales pitch. We have some of the most beautiful blanks in the business. Now, if you're new to leather, a belt blank, this is going to come to you strapped and ready to go. It's got our oblong in it. We've got rivet or screw holes, and you'll see what I'm talking about there. So all we need to do is measure our length, punch our holes. That's it, and we have a quality belt, no cardboard involved here, and I bet you know what I mean there. But Dad's gonna have a belt, handmade for him, two size, solid leather, made by us. What could be a better gift? He's gonna wear and love this for years to come. All right, let's step over here and set up our measurements for our sizing holes. Now, belt's tough camera shot, lots of length, very little width, but we're gonna work with it. Now, I've cut this to length. I've cut my blank to length. Well, how'd I do that? Let's jump over to a simple size chart. Now, we've got ample videos on belt making where I go into much greater detail. But the high point here is notice, I'm measuring from the center of my oblong to my second hole. That allows the wearer to come in a little bit, but also on the tip, I've got three inches between my last hole and my tip. That allows the wearer, if they're on that last hole, they've still got belt to go through the buckle and or the keeper, okay? Easy enough. Now, to make this much more simple, I've simply made a blank, and I call these shorties, because what I can do, so I'm gonna use my waist size, 34 inches. So therefore, 34 plus nine and a half, 43 and a half inches. So what I can do is cut my blank, 43 and a half inches, spot on, all right? now. If I'm not using a blank and I just have a strap, what I can do is take my shorty, go to one end, mark, simply scoot to the other end, mark, and my belt's gonna be perfect every time, all right? But let's measure this out. So, from the center of my oblong, and I do that because buckle distances can vary, my blank will not. So, the middle of my oblong, right down, 34. There we go, okay, that's my second hole. But let's do this. Let's drop this in. 34. Look at that. Perfect fit. So I'm going to mark from here. There we are. I've got my three inches. I'm centered. Perfect. Let's punch some holes in this. And my last hole. How easy is that? My blank is a perfect fit every time. Now I've got this. This is gorgeous. This is another one of our blanks. This is our English bridal chestnut and it's my absolute favorite but I punched this sometime back to a 34. Let's see how they line up. Look at that, spot on. This is a big help to us. All right, so we need to drop in an English point. Let's jump over to our pounding table and do that. Now we're going to add an English point to our end. Very professional touch, and this is a great tool. The tool, always the best way to go. But if you don't yet have the tool, what you can do is take a piece of cardstock fold that over, and simply make an easy curve from the edge to our fold. Therefore, perfectly consistent every time, we can use that for our pattern to cut from. Now, on the oblong, we get this question all the time. What size oblong goes with what size strap? One and a half inch strap, one and a half inch oblong, one and one. That's as easy as that, rule of thumb. But if you don't have the right size oblong, what you can do is simply cut two holes or punch two holes and cut between them. It's not perfect, but you know what? When we do our bend back, who's gonna notice that? Still looks good. All right, so let's bring our strap over. I'm gonna butt, in fact, what I do is I'm gonna put my pinky right at the bottom of my English point. That way I can feel the end of my strap. I'm gonna push that in just a hair. With this, I want a little bit of daylight on both sides. There we go, and my belt leaves, which it always does, but there we are. Looks very clean, very professional, all right? Let's step over to the other side, because notice, it's a little bit flat. Now we're doing black, timeless classic, dad will love it, but it's a little bit flat. Let's take care of that. 
Now, with our top coat, we're going to use a leather balm, and I love this. No ventilation required. We simply apply and then buff off. So with that thought in mind, I've got what I consider a wet rag. So I'm going to dip this in my top coat and apply. Then I'm going to let that dry for just a second. I'm going to come back with a dry cotton rag and buff that off. So let's go ahead and apply. Well, that's easy enough. Okay. Now, with that, notice it's a little bit wet. So I'm going to take this rag and I'm roughly just going to kind of buff off the excess. There we go. Now let's fold that and I'm going to buff. Now it's going to go very matte on me to begin with, but if I give it about 15 or 20 seconds, we're going to see that beautiful gloss come through. And a little bit more buffing, just 15, 20 seconds at most, but let's do this. There we are. Look at the gloss. Is that not gorgeous? Is that not a beautiful, rich, deep black? Just what we're looking for. Very finished looking. All right. So let's do this. I'm going to jump over to our English bridal. Let's add some top coat here and see what that looks like. And a little more buffing there. Look at that. Look at that color. That is so rich and clean. How cool is that? Easy enough. All right. So let's do this. Let's step over to our quartz. We're going to drop in our buckle. We're done. Now we've got two buckles, basically. We've got a heel bar. We need a keeper for this. We've got a center bar. Notice the bar's in the center. No keeper required. Cool thing is, when you order your blank, just order a matching keeper, and it's going to be a perfect fit. Now, I would suggest adding our top coat here, just like we did to our blank. All right, so let's go ahead and slide our keeper on. Let's take our heel bar buckle. Going to come in from the bottom with my prong. Slide that through. There we go. Okay, let's take a Chicago screw basically a threaded rivet. The only thing we need here is a screwdriver. Now, I would suggest putting a small dab of white glue in here. We don't want to weld that on, but we want to keep it from working out, and we can change our buckle out easily if we want to. So let's take a female side, hold closest to our buckle, and let's flip that around, bring that bend back down, drop in the male piece, and screw that in. All right, easy enough there. Let's scoot our keeper in, take our second screw, and I'm going to let this hang off the edge of my table so my keeper doesn't get crushed, but look at that. Makes that so easy for me to drop in that second screw. So let's tighten these down. There we go. Look at that. Is that not a professional belt? And will we make that in about five minutes? Very cool. Keeping it simple. That's exactly right. We've got a gorgeous belt for daddy. He's going to love it and wear it for years. But I hate to leave without talking about some decorations because, again, on a belt, sky's the limit. Now, this week, a little bit longer leather element, but it's for a good cause. All right, pick one. The top belt and the bottom belt, both are our water buffalo blanks. Very rustic and beautiful. But notice, too, when we add in that antique copper hardware or even that bright nickel hardware, those belts just pop. And the one in the middle... Again, one of my favorites, English Bridal. That's the rich brown. We've got a simple stamp design down the border with some spots down the middle, and it's gorgeous. All right, pick two. We're going to step it up a little bit. Our top belt, we've got our antique brass hardware, but we've got a Mexican basket weave braid down the center. That is one of my favorites. Next one, you've probably seen this belt. We made this in our belt video. And the bottom... One of our embossed belt blanks, undyed. You can absolutely dye that yourself or just add a top coat and it will pop. So again, I hope you make some gorgeous belts for dad. I hope he loves them. Hope it's good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.